Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, I have a weakness that I'm going to confess to you. I can't resist a food bargain. So I went to the supermarket yesterday to do a, a shop for my, for my missus. And in the shop was a giant bag of spinach that had been reduced from £2.40 to 12 pence. You heard me correctly. To 12 pence. Now, come on, I'm only human. I can't resist that. A giant bag of spinach. Now, I think with spinach, it goes off really quickly if you don't use it. So if I just left it in the fridge, within a couple of days, that would be slimy and I'd put it in a bin. But I figured, a giant bag of spinach, I've got to do something with it. So what I did, I went on Facebook and I asked the question to a bunch of my friends who were connected to me on Facebook. I said, give me some suggestions of what you think I could make with this giant bag of spinach as one of the main ingredients. And it was, they got a fantastic response. Over 40 of people commented and I got lots of different types of responses from pancakes to, um, to quiches, to curries. But one of the things that, that reoccurred that were quite popular was a Greek dish called Spanakopita. I'm not quite sure how I pronounce that right, but there you go, Spanakopita, which is a Greek dish which uses, I think, phyllo pastry, um, layers which is a little bit flaky, with some cheese filling it. It's like a bit like a bit like a pie. Uh, and another one, another suggestion that was uh, almost as popular was um, spinach and feta um, puff pastry parcels. So I kind of got the idea of both those two things and kind of combined them both together. And I'm going to make a spinach and tofu ricotta pastry. It's not exactly a pie. It's not exactly a parcel. I've got an idea in my head of how I want to present it. Let's give it a shot. It's really quite simple. Follow me. Before we get started, just do me a quick favor. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, before we get started, let me just talk you through the ingredients. In the middle here, we have one finely chopped onion and about two or three cloves of finely chopped garlic. Inside this jar, we have a few spoonful, a couple spoonfuls of yeast flakes. Really tasty, great addition to any savory sauce or dish. Next, we've got a bit of black pepper, some salt, some onion granules. Here we have uh, some peanut butter mixed in with some sesame oil. Uh, the recipe originally called for tahini, but I couldn't get hold of any, so I've approximated my own. And here we have the juice of about half a lemon with some of the rind. We also have some puff pastry, some smooth tofu, and our bargain bag of spinach. Okay, the very first step in this particular dish is I'm going to, to wilt down our giant bag of spinach. Even the bag this size, once it's cooked down, it'll whittle down really quite to quite a small amount. A little bit of butter in the frying pan. This is actually a vegan butter called Vitalite. And then all I'm gonna do is put in our spinach. But bang it in. It's already pre-washed. Now it looks like a lot, and it is a lot, but I promise you, it's just gonna shrink. Even this massive amount filling the entire frying pan, it's just gonna shrink right down. Cover it up, give it a little shake, make sure it doesn't burn the bottom. I'm gonna leave this for two, three minutes and we'll see exactly how much this giant bag of spinach cooks itself right down. And then after just a couple of minutes, we can see that giant amount of spinach that was literally that high, it's reduced down to half already. And it was gonna reduce down significantly more than that. So famous, spinach is famous for its wilting powers. It's just gonna really reduce right the way down. Just gonna put it back on again. Give it a couple more minutes. So here we have our spinach, it's still nice and green. It's nice to reduce down. Perfect. Now the, the rest of this dish ain't gonna take no time at all. This next stage we could do by hand, but if you've got power tools, why not use them? So all you have to do now is put all your ingredients together. So I have my tofu, let's get it in. Tofu is a really versatile uh, product from which if you look back through some of our videos, we've got tofu chicken, which is unbelievable. 
unbelievably good and realistic. Then all I'm gonna do is literally add in all the other seasonings and all the other ingredients. First up we have our onions. Next up we have our garlic, again chopped really fine. Garlic wire, I've used about three cloves of, of garlic. Some onion granules. A teaspoonful of mixed herbs. And nutritional yeast. Next I've got the lemon juice with some of the lemon rind. Here I have our tahini replacement, so it's actually peanut butter with some sesame seed oil. That's going to help add a little bit of creaminess to our vegan ricotta. Next up, start this particular dish, we have our spinach, which is now wilted down really nicely. It's amazing how almost that full bag of maybe 500 grams of spinach is wilted down to such a small amount. And finally, I'm just going to add some salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to taste it again at the end to make sure the seasoning's okay. And then we blend. And that's kind of what we're looking for. I don't want it blended into a paste. So it's, it's kind of fine, but it's not into a mushy paste. So that's perfect, really. Just a couple of blitzes, and that's exactly what we're looking for. This next section I'm going to do is, is alternative. So if you want to give it an extra cheesy flavor, it's sort of like a natural mild cheese flavor, right? It is, right as it is. If you want to give it a little extra, extra cheesy flavor, you can add a little bit of cheese. So I've got some here, some vegan cheese. It's free from cheese from Asdo, which has got quite a nice realistic taste just to kind of help emphasize the cheesy flavor. All right, now this is probably the trickiest part of this particular dish, and that's how exactly we're going to present our pie. Now, there are lots of different ways you can do this. You could literally cut triangles in, blob the mixture in, fold it over, and have a, a, triangle, a, a triangle pastry. You could do that. You could do fold it over like a patty. You could put it all in a, a baking dish and put a little pastry on top so it puffs up. There's lots of different ways of doing this, but I've seen a way which is really quite pretty and I'm going to attempt to do it that way. So, I need a circle. So I'm going to cut around this. Now, first of all, I'm going to put my mixture, blob of mixture in the middle. Make sure this stays in the middle. And then here's a really tricky part. I want to put a ring around the outside. So I'm going to put a ring all, <clears throat> all the way around. Little ring all the way around. It'll make sense why we're doing this in a minute. So all you have to do is put a ring all the way around, try and make sure your ring is about the same thickness all the way. That's quite important, I think. So now we're going to put a lid on our pastry. So I'm going to spread this over. What I want is to create the shape around the different sections that we have. Okay, so, so far, so okay. I'm being delicate with the shaping of this. So now, I'm just shaping around now because of the way the pastry stretched, I didn't need to you know, I didn't need to make it quite as much bigger as I actually have done, but better safe than sorry. So here we go. So now I'm just sealing the two ends of pastry together all the way around. Again, if it gets a bit too sticky, you can always just add a little bit. 
or flouty things off from sticking. Right, to help seal it, I'm just going to use my fork to go around the edges. Okay, next I'm just going to trim around the outside to get my original circle back. Again, I'm not going to waste any of the pastry, I'm going to see if I can reuse whatever's left. Alright, next I'm just going to brush it with some milk. Now I'm using this particular milk is an almond milk, that's going to help it with the browning. Brush it very lightly all over. For decoration, I'm just going to sprinkle some sesame seeds over the top. Sorry, some poppy seeds. Just in case you didn't know, poppy seeds are extremely high in calcium. They're higher in calcium than milk. In fact, I've got a video out called 10 plant-based foods that have more calcium than milk. Check it out. Might surprise you. And now comes the potentially trickiest part of all. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut these and it seems completely counterproductive, but here we go. I'm going to cut these and then you're going to see the kind of pattern I'm going to make once I've cut them. Now, here comes the trickiest part of all. Now, I've done many baking fails, but you've got to be into it, I suppose. Here we go. So now, I'm going to take one of these segments, very delicately, I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to twist it around. Pick it up. And I'm going to twist it all the way around and set it back on itself. Pick it up. Pick it up. Twist it all the way around and back on itself. Yourself. Right, let's bake it. So into the oven, into the oven for about uh, 40 minutes on 180 and we'll see what comes out at the end. I think should have done these a little bit smaller, but we shall see. Okay, I think we're done. Let's take it out of the oven and see what we're dealing with. Mm, it smells lovely. Look at that. Would you take a look at that? How pretty is that? Out of the oven now, this is really, really pretty. The little spiral twist thing has come out really nicely. We've got a, something that, that's really, you can present now as a, as a main course type of dish. Uh, someone can come and serve themselves, they can take a piece off and have, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Maybe this seven one can go into two, so it's like ten portions potentially from one thing. And it's presented in such a way that it's pretty. Now, I've seen it done whereby you can divide these up into smaller pieces, make the, the dome part a little bit smaller. So you can have maybe, I could, you could easily have twice as many pieces. So we've got so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could easily separate it so you have 16 pieces plus another piece in the middle. That's 17 portions out of one thing. So that, that could work as well, but I think, I think really, that's a really pretty looking result. So that's clearly a main course centerpiece now. So that's a, I think that's a fantastic job well done. Now, this looks too pretty to eat, so I think I'm gonna reserve this for my wife coming home. It's kind of dish you really want people to be able to come home to. 
it's the kind of dish you want, you want people to be able to come round to share this with, but unfortunately, uh, lockdown time, we, no one can come round, so I'm gonna have to sort of eat it on your behalf. But I'm not gonna eat it right now, because it's too pretty. What I'm gonna do, what I did with some of the pastry that I had left over, I made sort of small um, pastry shells, or they almost look pretty much like patties, to be honest with you. But as you can see, they are filled with the same mixture. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna taste them and tell you what they taste like. Now these are fresh out of the oven, so they're a little bit hot. So I'm a bit reluctant, this is one that's a bit cooler. So I may be a bit of... <laughs> we'll see. Mmm. It tastes a lot like a cheese and onion pasta, like a really good quality cheese and onion pasta. I'm not tasting the individual um, tofu or spinach, but collectively it all comes together to make a really nice cheesy flavour. I think it was a good addition to add in the additional cheese, but that, is, that part is optional. But that's a really good tasting cheese, it's vegan cheese, but... Oh. Mmm. Really? Really? Really, really tasty. That's a really tasty dish. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really, really successful outcome. Well, I think we had a pile of spinach, and now we've got spinach crammed into a tasty little parcel. There's no child on earth that wouldn't gobble these up. You wouldn't, you know, eat your greens, get out of my way, I'll be there first, because this is a really healthy, tasty way to eat your greens. The only thing that's not quite as healthy in this particular dish is the actual pastry. All the filling is really, really quite healthy. High in protein because of tofu, full of flavour, an absolute result there. Once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Uh, Food Tech 101 is also on Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, we try and post at least two or three times a week, so we kind of follow us there as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, my name is Mr. Lybird. With you, and call me sir. Mm. Of things we know.